game was canceled. Um, and it turns out that all the games were canceled and that the NBA players, in solidarity with, I guess, the shooting in, um, in uh, that place in Wisconsin, I can't pronounce, uh, basically have decided to not play, although they've, they've changed their mind, but that was the decision on Thursday. There were more Milwaukee Bucks, which are, I guess are the favorites in the East to go to the uh, championship game, uh, decided that given that they're from Wisconsin, uh, that they would not play on um, uh, because of what happened, because of the police shooting. And, uh, and, as a, and, and then the Lakers and the Clippers decided they were just ending. They were all going home. And then, oh, my God, it, it just went on and on and on. And uh, there were negotiations, and the owners stepped in, and the owners said, well, if you don't play, we're going to cut your salaries. And the players said, yeah, but if we play, we want you to commit to all kinds of social justice stuff. And supposedly Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever, I think, um, who, uh, who is an owner, stepped in and kind of negotiated a deal between the owners and the players. And what is the deal? The deal constitutes uh, the fact that the owners now will uh, invest more resources into social justice issues, into increasing voting. They want to use the stadiums, to the, the basketball stadiums, to, to, to facilitate voting, right, to facilitate more voting, as if. All the problems we have today will be solved if only more people voted. If only we had more people voting, all our problems would go away. Uh, I mean, one of the things that all of these um, all of these crises that we're experiencing today in this country, and the NBA is a good example of this, is that the complete ignorance, complete ignorance of people of what this country represents, what it stands for, what our system of government is all about. We are not a democracy. This problem that we face is not a lack of democratic participation. The problem that we face is actually too much democracy, too much paying attention to the will of the people, too much. Not, I mean, I think that everybody should vote, but too much, too many decisions made political. Jennifer writes, everything's political. Too much politics. And therefore, too much voting. In a sense of voting on every single issue. On everything that applies to everything. Instead of what this country was founded on, the principles on which this country was founded, which are the principles of individual rights. Inalienable rights. Which means that no matter how many people vote to take your rights away, they can't. Or at least they shouldn't be allowed to do it. That is the system of government we supposedly have in the United States. A system of government in which you cannot take people's rights away. They're inalienable. And we have a whole system of government that is separate our voting from the decision making. And a system of government that makes consensus difficult, makes lawmaking difficult, makes change difficult. And on purpose, and I've talked about this on a previous show, the founders wanted gridlock. They wanted big legislation, big rules, big laws, difficult. They wanted you to be able to convince a lot of people to agree with you before these laws were passed. So the problem is not more democracy, just as the problem is not social justice, a concept that I would bet 90% of NBA players couldn't define, wouldn't know what it meant. Now, put yourself in the shoes of one of these basketball players. And let's say you believe. You believe that there is some form of systemic racism in the United States, that, there's, that we live in a racist society. There's a march going on in D.C. right now against systemic racism. All right. I'm willing, I'm willing to, to, to contemplate that idea. What is the solution? What are you proposing? What is being proposed here? And how do you get rid of it? Is it that the laws are racist? No, we, we got rid of the laws, which would be systemic. We got rid of those laws in the 60s. Is it that police procedures 
the procedures governing police actions are racist? Well, no, nobody's ever pointed to any particular procedure. Even a chokehold or putting a knee on the neck is not racist in and of itself. It's only racist if it's applied in a racist way. It's applied for some people and not for others. But again, the procedures itself, the, the system itself, where's the racism? Now, is it true that blacks generally are significantly poorer than whites? Yes. Okay. We're studying, figuring out why. Maybe there's something going on there. But people have been studying it for ages, and we've had a war poverty for ages, and we've had affirmative action for ages, and we've had all kinds of programs to try to alleviate that, So what, and, and we haven't. So whatever people are proposing doesn't seem to be working. What is it? that these basketball players who truly believe there's a problem in this country, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with them necessarily. Or, or, or what is it that Kaepernick taking a knee, what is it, what change do they want? Now, I know some people will say, well, they, what they really want is reparations. And maybe they want reparations to so say it. Say we're fighting for reparations. At least then we know what we're dealing with. What way... And, and then we can combat that and, and show the complete injustice and unfairness of reparations and how it doesn't solve the problem. Reparations would actually bring about more racism, not less racism. What is it that they want? Massive redistribution of wealth? What are the programs that we be instituted that dealt directly with issues of racism? Now, I know that the intellectuals want to do away with capitalism. They want to destroy capitalism in the name of racial equality, in the name of systemic racism. They want to tear down capitalism. And they've told us this, right? I, I, I talked about the, the guy who wrote um, uh, the book about, um, you know, whiteness. I forget his name now. Okay. Um, a Muslim first name, but I can't remember his family name. Anyway, what are they? What what is it that they're proposing? Then they're, they're not telling us. Other than the intellectuals are telling us they want to tear down. But but do the NBA players really want to tear down capitalism? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would really hurt their ability to make money. Really, yeah, uh, Ibram Kendi, Ibram Kendi, who said, "Yeah, racism is capitalism. In order to end racism, we must tear down capitalism." Okay, I get it. At least Ibram is honest. He's straightforward. We know what he wants. He wants socialism. He wants statism. He wants fascism. He wants some version of not, of not capitalism. But what do the NBA players want? They make millions, millions and millions and millions. Because of what? Because this country is capitalist. Indeed, the NBA is a quite a capitalist system. It even even is excluded from antitrust laws so they can collude and they can they can negotiate just like every other industry should be allowed to do. <laughs> so why not tell us what it is you actually want us to do? Now, I think most of these players and, and most of the people out there demonstrating, not the rioters, but the demonstrators, I think a lot of them are really concerned about racism. They're, they're convinced, whether justly or unjustly, that racism is an issue in this country, and they want to do something about it. But what? What do they want to do? And until they tell us what they want to do, it's almost impossible to take them seriously. It's just an abstract cry into the wilderness. Now, Martin Luther King gave us a vision of what he wanted. He wanted to live in a world where people are judged by the character, not by the color of their skin. That's great. That's a world I would like to live in too. That's a world we can fight for, particularly we can fight for culturally, philosophically, ideologically, educationally. But what does the world look like to these NBA players who want social justice? And how do we fight for this? 
And how do the owners do anything about it? Is it about education? Okay, then I get it. Let's get school choice. Let's get education saving accounts. Let's get government out of education. Let's get private schools into the inner cities. Let's raise the quality of education by privatizing it. But that's not what they're advocating for. What are they? And, and they won't say because many of them don't know. And the ones who do know, know it'll get them in trouble if they do say it. Because again, the world is guided by ideas, good ideas, bad ideas. It's always ideas. It's always intellectuals. And that's why you shouldn't really pay attention to what basketball players say about politics or about the world or about the culture. The people who count are people like Ibram Kendi. The people who count are the intellectuals out there. And therefore, when the NBA players are advocating for doing something and they, they're offering nothing as what should be done, then you have to assume that what will guide what will be done are the ideas of people like Ibram Kendi. What they're really asking the owners to do is commit suicide. They're asking the owners to put money aside, to invest in anti-capitalist, anti-market, anti-freedom, anti-growth, ideas, programs, educational institutions. And if not, they should be offering their own. So it's sad because, you know, it's sad every time I watch a game now and, and there's Black Lives Matter everywhere, the, the T-shirts and everything. I, I still watch the games, but because I don't think they know what they're doing, right? These are children, unfortunately, all of them. They don't know what they're doing. Some of them maybe have to do it because otherwise they, they, they their teammates would, would lock them out. So... You know, these BLM shirts and everything. I mean, the BLM is awful. The BLM is horrific. But I think that most people associate BLM with not the worst of their ideas. I think most people associate the BLM with um, with just being anti-racist. Just being anti-police. Um brutality and as such I think they're mostly doing this out of ignorance you could say out of purposeful ignorance out of evasion which which is bad really bad but they're not intellectual advocates they don't know what they do they really don't know what to do. It's the same thing with the marchers in the demonstrations. They don't know what they're marching for. They hold Black Lives Matter signs, but they don't know what that means. <coughs> Sorry. All right. So I just wanted to comment on the basketball. I think it's... Uh, I think it's... Uh, it's sad, and it's not as fun. And luckily, luckily, they're back. And luckily, uh, we start having basketball again on sa Sunday. Well, Saturday, but uh, Celtics are playing on Sunday. I only watch the Celtics. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, 
please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to hundred. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this, uh, and, and you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.